Good morning, traders. Welcome to today's market review. This is Fred Rezek at CM Trading. Today's April 2nd, 2019, and today is Tuesday morning. So looking at the major economic events a day, Earlier this morning, we had a rate statement coming out of Australia. We'll take a look at the Aussie dollar just a moment. And then looking at the uh, later today at 2.30 South African time, core durable good orders coming out of the United States. Big rally yesterday in the markets. Uh, and specifically, the Dow Jones rallied quite nicely after gapping up yesterday. We'll take a look at that. Now, for example, Euro, Aussie dollar, all slide. And the British pound bounced yesterday, but then fizzled out. Okay, so dollar getting stronger across the board. Now, when we're looking at the indices, as I mentioned, Dow Jones had a big day up yesterday, extended its gap up, and then gapped and go, which is a really great sign that the markets are recovering in terms of the United States. However, okay, in Europe, it's not the same story. Okay, so there are specific markets that are rotating while other markets are still, you know, in the slumps. Now, looking at the commodities, gold is flat okay trading at 1289 ish level oil rallies that could have been some of the impetus what pushed the dow jones higher yesterday and lastly looking at cryptos okay so bitcoin was steadily rising yesterday and this morning in pre-hours it was rising quite nicely it's it seemed like it's getting that volume we were looking for and guess what happened right afterwards big spike upwards to 4,800, okay? So like I said yesterday, if it bounced above the 4,500-ish level, 4,100-ish 4, um, level, then we could see it go further higher and boom, we got that final spike, okay? So that's really the trade of the day. Now, let's take a look at today's trading and see what we can expect. So we're jumping into the Forex symbols first in the EURUSD on a daily chart as you can see and we're really flirting with disaster right here 11204 now we haven't been at this area we've touched it several times um, back in March and then at the beginning of March and then back in November ish time okay now we're really flirting with it right now if we do break this 12 112 ish level okay I do believe we could continue um, making a correction on the downside now how much further could we make the correction well you got to look at a weekly chart to see that and then it gets a little bit foggy okay the real obvious next support level is 110 okay that's a roundabout number about the next real you know roundish number that we could get to but that's not really supported if we look back here there wasn't really support there either so real next support it's really hard to say okay we're even looking at a weekly chart so with that said I think we're going to just get choppy trading but if we do get this breakout we could definitely see it break below 1150 and then uh, 11150 that is and then 111 possibly okay so this is really a very important point to be now I mentioned before GBP kind of bounced yesterday and then fizzled all right that was the bounce and that's the fizzle okay nothing really happening there uh, trading lower versus the US dollar could be just brexit rumors and you know with all that happening okay still very very difficult to trade okay it has been the strongest uh forex symbol versus the dollar but as you can see you know it it does succumb to what everybody else has succumbed now jumping into the uh, the aussie dollar this morning we had a massive sell-off after this gap up and then just a little rally yesterday so this is trading within reason okay if we look at it it's trading between this two um areas okay um that's on the top side this is on the bottom side so we have still some way to go on the bottom side if we do break this 70 69 ish level then we could see it further decline to the bottom but as you can see the euro is the weakest versus the usd and when we look at a chart so my go-to one is the euro usd to see if it's breaking lower and to see if it's going to carry all the rest of them lower however the usd czar Yes, they got a little bit stronger, okay, and trading from 1450 and then gapping down and then trading at 1422. I mean, it's sideways trading and it's, you know, it's a, it's a little bit difficult to anticipate these kinds of moves, especially since we broke above this 1450 level and we thought we we're going to continue to the 1482. Uh, we gave way somewhere in the middle and then bouncing right back, um, uh, the Zarg bouncing right back, getting stronger, right? The, the lower the, the, the price, it's stronger versus the dollar, okay? And the higher the price, it's weaker against the dollar. So with that said, okay, we are trading within a range here, so it could just bounce here. This was previous resistance subsequent support at this 1413 ish level so this may be the bottom range now jumping into gold all right now this was the one 
1288 this morning, okay, we, we mentioned this breakout on, on this trend line last from last Thursday, and then, you know, we're capitulating here at 1288. So I think it still wants to see what it's going to do uh, before this non-farm payroll number comes out on Friday. Very important number that does come out. Now, I mentioned this yesterday, oil this morning trading at 61.73. That's our next resistance level, okay? So we've had a really significant rally in oil this year from $42 a barrel to 61.73, okay? So this has been a steady rise for the price of oil. If we break above this, okay, then the next real level we could get up to is back in the 70s, okay? So this is a massive correction for oil, okay? So just be aware of it. And it's a significant resistance right here at 61.73. So again, be aware of it. Now looking at that Dow Jones before we jump into the JSC, Dow Jones, as you can see, is above 26,170 and is with some flavor, meaning it's got some momentum. It has to sustain this momentum to get any higher, okay? My, my support level is 26,170. So if we do breach it, then this could have been a, just a fake out breakout. Okay, so with that said, you know, just make sure that you're trading responsibly with stop losses, that if it does breach this 26,170, that's something to be considering about. Now, JSE yesterday, we had this nice gap up and go. Now, we've broken above this area. Okay, same story as the Dow Jones. But again, like I said, we need some consistency in this market. We need to see follow through, not just, you know, a few, few days of a spike, but continued um, buying in it. Okay, as this is getting stronger. Okay, it is getting stronger altogether. It might not get back to the 52, 500 ish level today or tomorrow, but it is heading that way. Okay, because it's it's letting you know we're making higher higher highs and higher lows, and that means that's usually a significant uh, and for um, indication that it's getting stronger and it's moving higher. Now, just to jump into the stocks right before we discuss Bitcoin, which is a major move this morning. Uh, Boeing that yesterday had a nice move up. I did speak about this. This was a gap and go as it got stronger yesterday and nicely recovering itself from that massive loss it had after that plane crash down in Ethiopia. Horrible experience. Uh, I, my heart goes out to the families affected with it, obviously. Um, but looking here, uh, just technically speaking, out of the um, the Boeing stock, it does have some more room to go up to 395 before it may sell off, okay, because this was the gap down. Now, looking at some of the other stocks, Apple caught up just a little bit, nothing really to write home about, but the traditional stocks did go higher, okay, that means Alcoa. So Alcoa did gap up and go yesterday to 29, but again, I need to see some follow through. Okay, these are responding to the markets. They're not taking it out higher by themselves. So it's a little bit disconcerting. Now, lastly, and most importantly, Bitcoin. Okay, now we've been watching this all week. Okay, I did mention this earlier in the week. We got closer to this 4,000 level early in the week. We broke the 4,000. We were above 4,000 for the first time in a long time on Monday, yesterday. And I said, if we get above 4,100, we may see it correct itself all the way up. Now, this morning, it had a spike to 5,000, okay? As we were speaking this morning over the last couple of hours, let's just, let's just look at a 30-minute chart. We had a massive spike from 4,155 up to 5,000, probably news-related, but this is what I'm talking about, where the markets kind of correlates the news to the technical trading, and you see it right there in front of you. Now, you could go look in yesterday's daily review. I did speak about it. I did mention this, and this is where the follow-through comes in. Now, it looks like it's correcting itself because it is a fade the news kind of situation. Um, let's look at where possible support could be. Possible support could be at 4,200, so it may sell off back to there, or 44,300-ish level, 430, uh, excuse me, 44,34 would be a decent support level for it to um, pull back to. Okay, it's not to say that this is not over. This is definitely the future, just a matter of time before it goes up higher. So, you know, with that said, you know, just trade responsibly, especially that it is trading so uh, um, with such tremendous volatile volatility. Excuse me, let me say it correctly. And so there is some continued upward momentum, but just if it does pull back, your your error to pull back this 44.34 and do you stop losses because the, the moves are so vicious. This is Fred, Fred Razak. I want to wish you guys a great trading day. Thank you.